Hey guys, this is Srini and in this video, let's talk about principal component analysis. Well, not the math part of it. Yeah, if you're interested in the math part, go ahead and read about principal component analysis, you know, the original papers and other follow-up papers. But here, we're gonna talk about principal components analysis as a tool to speed up our machine learning training. How does it do that? By reducing the number of dimensions, okay? That's the goal. Now, this is just a uh, tutorial in the next one. We'll implement this, and in the one after that, we'll implement it on a different type of data set. So I intend to make three videos on this, and this being the first one, laying the groundwork. So let's look at breast cancer data. There are 30 features. Uh, this is a data set that you can download, but this is just an example data set I'm using. So for a tumor, various things are measured, and these are all the different measurements, and there is a prediction saying whether it is uh, malignant or benign. Binary classification, a bunch of uh, features. Now, we can train on this, uh, but uh, what, what, what do these different features basically mean, or are they even contributing? I mean, in this case, this is a small data set, so the training is super fast, but I hope to make a point here by just showing a data set that can be easily uh, understood. So uh, first, let's plot radius versus compactness. These are two different columns that they have, okay? And you see the data is kind of spread out. I'm not sure if there is a trend. Maybe there is a trend, you know, uh, as the radius is increasing, maybe the compactness is slightly going up. But uh, now if you look at radius versus area, obviously they are correlated because area is square, uh, you know, relationship with radius. So of course it's, it's highly correlated. Now, if you look at radius versus concavity, it's also kind of correlated. As you increase the radius, the concavity seems to be going up. And the radius versus smoothness is kind of spread out, but I'm not sure if it is highly correlated or not. So why am I talking about correlations? Well, uh, PCA, principal component analysis, can help identify the correlations between these data points. And it is a unsupervised learning, and it reduces dimensions. It does not tell you what features are best and what features are worst. It just takes all the features and says, hey, these are all you know, uh, boiled down to these principal components and the principal component one is, you know, represents, uh, has more information than other principal components. But when you add all the principal components, then it should technically contain all the information that you have in the original data. So visually, I'll show that in a second. So you can cluster similar data points, okay? based on the feature correlation, okay? And this is unsupervised completely, so it does it automatically, well, it, it does it without human intervention. Okay, so if you look at the data set some, uh, you know, in uh, three dimensions, you have like X, uh, X1, X2, X3, for example, and then all the data points are spread over. Now, this data point, the information contained in these data points can be represented by principal component one, that is a line that best accounts for the shape of the distribution, okay? And it represents the maximum variance in the direction of the data. If that doesn't make sense, uh, I'll show you another example to kind of make slightly more sense. And principal component two has uh, 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 a bit more information about this data and all principal components are orthogonal to each other, mutually orthogonal. What that means is well, if principal component one is in this direction, my PC2 is 90 degrees to this and uh, you can have n number of principal components and they're all orthogonal to each other. Now, how n number of these are orthogonal to each other, it's, it's, you have to think about it, okay? Uh, because if, if you think about our space, x, y, and z, three dimensions, then it's easy to say, okay, all three can be orthogonal. But n orthogonal, we don't have the mental capacity to imagine that, but that exists. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me use a very simple example here. So uh, let's look at age of a baby or a kid versus their height and weight. So as the age grows, obviously, the height is also go, uh, growing up, right? Now, also with age, the weight also goes up. And uh, as the height goes up, the weight is also going up. As you can see, there they all have some correlation in them. So do we really need all three of these? age, height, and weight. Can we actually represent this with like one or two principal components, the entire data? This is again a highly simplified case, uh, hoping that it makes sense. Now let's plot this in a three-dimensional plot. So I just did uh, age on one axis, height and weight, and you can see the data is spread in three dimensions, right? So now if you take a projection of this and project it onto this bottom, 
uh, you know, plane. So how does it look like? So when you project it, it kind of looks somewhat like this. Okay, now let's represent this data using a principal component along the uh, direction that has the maximum various, uh, variance and also the orthogonal direction, PC2. So uh, in this case, maybe PC1 uh, contains about, uh, let's say, 70% of the information and PC2 contains about 20% of the information and the remaining 10% is something we lose. So it's not lossless. When you do principal component, you do lose some information and there are ways to find out how much information am I losing? How much information am I willing to sacrifice? It's as a user, you have a say in how much, uh, how many principal components to use. And I'll show that in the next tutorial when we talk about applying this onto a real, well, why not use just the breast cancer data set? Let's actually apply that on the in the next tutorial. So in summary, just to close this off, PCA is basically it reduces the features while preserving the variance information. If you come from statistics background, you probably understand that if not, it's fine. Uh, it's dangerous, but it's fine. it's dangerous because you're using something where you may not fu have fully uh, in-depth understanding, but that's that's what tools are meant to be, right? You just use this as a tool. If it solves your problem, you're good. Okay, and it enables uh, computation while not losing data's resemblance. Uh, and it's not just used for this. It's used for many, many, many applications where you're trying to find correlations. For example, you have uh, spectral data, multispectral data. Okay, principal component analysis can be actually used to go through all the multispectral data to find trends in your data saying that, hey, all of these uh, regions of spectra are correlating to this one spot, other spectra correlating to others. So when you do these type of analysis, principal component analysis can really tell you the top five uh, components, which in the spectral example, the top five different features that are contributing or that are unique, okay? And uh, uh, one thing I would like to remind you is PCA is, uh, it does not create a subset of features, which means you have 30 features. It's not going to tell you feature one, feature five, and feature 22. These are the good ones. Other ones are not as good. This is not what PCA is. If you really want to do that, fit your data using random forest classifier and do feature ranking. It tells you which features work the best in fitting that model, but PCA is not that. PCA is basically, it gives you completely different, uh, you know, uh, numbers that you're uh, using to fit a model, which we'll see again in the next tutorial. So I hope you learned something from uh, this uh, video and please complete your knowledge of what you gained here by watching the next video and the one after that. In fact, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you're notified whenever these type of videos actually uh, come up, show up, okay, on my YouTube channel. So thank you very much. And again, let's meet in the next tutorial.